you and kind of the genesis of when it got going? Um, oh my god, I don't I know exact dates. Yeah, my mm-hmm. brother von Trotter um, offered it to me, I think, like three years ago. And uh, then it took about maybe two years. You know what? I'm really bad with dates. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It took about from the time she was talking to me until the time we started shooting. It was probably two years. And how did the shoot go? Was it a, was the shoot good? Did everything go well? What was the hardest part about playing Hildegard? Of well, um, the hardest part was that uh, you can't really think as an actor that you are actually able to go into the head of a person of the 12th century. Because, I mean, very often, like, you, 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 you do research and you add things, but a 12th century, you just have to subtract so many things because there are just so many things that did not exist. And you can't empty your head that much. I mean, the earth was still not round at this point. I mean, it's just almost unbelievable what all didn't exist, and what people were not thinking, and how different the world was. So, you know, we always say to ourselves, well, it is a movie after all, you know? It's not a documentary. And uh, that, was, that was one of the hardest parts. And, uh, of course, for an actor, what was really hard is um, she convinced the people of her time that uh, she actually had these visions. There were a lot of people who had visions, but to be able to convince the church that her visions really did come from God and not from the devil, as you know, some people thought, uh, to be able to make this believable as an actress was a challenge also. So I was quite scared before I started doing this role. And this is your fifth film with uh, Miss Margarita yeah. Bonfada. How was your relationship with her and kind of the, the way you guys have made films progressed over the years from when you first started making films with her all the way up until the present? Well, the first film I did with her was uh, called, in English, Marion and Julian. It was about um, a woman whose sister was a terrorist. It was based on a true story. It was based on Gudrun Enzling, the RAF member in Germany. And um, I was at the same time, practically, I was doing another role with um, Fassbinder, which was almost the opposite of that role. It was a film called Lola, where I was playing a nightclub singer, and that was a completely different world than the terrorist. And I remember I had to come in, you know, um, from one set to the next to Berlin, and I had to be very concentrated to play this woman who was in hunger strike, and uh, Margareta always tells the story that uh, people really thought I was a very unpleasant person. Mm-hmm. And they really didn't like me so much on the set. Because only later she understood that it was really necessary for me to, to just come in there, do my thing, and I, I, I had to be so, yeah, so concentrated. I, I couldn't go you know, with them for lunch and joke around and you know, do all that. And then she still offered me um, the next film, Rosa Luxemburg, which was, um, I don't know, you probably know her, revolutionary, who was a wonderful woman. And then I changed and everybody liked me. <laughs> 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 so, uh, and then we just, we, then we did another film and another film and we, we have become really, really good friends and we love working with each other. I'd like to, you know, invite the audience now to ask some questions. Um, you said at the beginning that you had to shed, I guess, like nine centuries worth of the advancement of science and technology and human knowledge of all sorts. I was wondering whether you felt you had to shed uh, any aspect of basic humanity, because as I see the movie, uh, it's about human nature and that human nature is sort of eternal, it's always been the same. But I was wondering how you feel about my thought. Well, it's a very philosophical question. Is human nature really the same? I don't know. Um, at the time when Hildegard lived, there was actually a great, a big transformation in society happening. 
you know, that she came from an aristocratic background. And uh, when she was born, um, she believed, and she believed this in fact all her life, in a way that uh, aristocrats were the natural leaders of men. And there was, it, was, it was a feudal society where people owned other people in a way like, like their own slaves. They were the unfree people. They belonged to the estates. They were not allowed to marry whom they wanted to marry. They were not allowed to, to um, trade with anybody else. So they were really connected to the aristocrat to whom they belonged. And in that time when Hildegard von Bingen lived, this started to change. And uh, it was when, when, when cities were created. At, at I think when she lived, there were about 17 cities existing. Um, you know, the biggest was like 10,000 uh, inhabitants, the smallest maybe 500. And so people, were leaving estates, they were going to cities, they were starting to make own decisions, which before was not possible. So there was a great change in human nature, you know? And I think that, that I, I don't know which part really stays the same. I suppose love is something, or fear of death. Uh, there are certain things that do stay the same over centuries, but others are, are very much determined by, by their time. If I may, you mention the word love, and I saw a strong sexual attraction between you and rich artists, and I was wondering whether you, in acting a part, uh, experienced that or felt that that was what was partly involved at least? Well, I wouldn't... It's, it's hard to say where is it sexual or what is erotic. Um, when you read her writings, you can see that um, even her, her love to Jesus Christ was, if, if, if you read it, you know, the, the words, it, it sounds like, like very erotic love. So, uh, I mean, these people were people who, who had, of course, sexual desires and... Uh, but I think they sublimated it, and so I would say it's, it's, they're very passionate, you know, and they feel all this, but I doubt that it was a, a consummated sexual relationship. 